Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. And in this iPhone GarageBand quick tip, we're gonna be showing you how to free up some space on your phone and make a backup copy of your GarageBand songs on your PC. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I've got here, I've opened GarageBand and I've got all of my songs here. And as you can see, I've got quite a few different projects here. I need to clear off some space uh, from my phone, so but I want to keep some backup copies of these songs. So if I want to work on them again later, I can go ahead and do that. So the first thing I need to do is to hold down on one of these. So if I touch and hold, like in most parts of uh, the iOS, it will start doing this funky little shaking maneuver. And that means that uh, that item is ready for something to happen to it. So you can see that this uh, track called The Beach has a blue uh, label around it, and we've got some options up the top here. So from right to left, we can export this directly to our iCloud um, drive. We can delete the song. We can duplicate the song, so if you've got a song and you want to duplicate it so that you keep an original version and then do some changes to a new version, you can duplicate and create a copy, or we can export. And this last option is what we're going to need to do to create a backup copy and copy this file over to our PC. So let's hit on the export function. And it will bring up um, a fairly familiar sort of um, screen um, where we can airdrop the file and then we can actually send the file to a number of areas. Um, and across the top here, we've got a number of different options, some of which work better than others. Um, you can experiment with those and, and see if any work well for you. But what I like to do in the, the easiest way and the most convenient way for me is to actually copy these over to my computer. And we do that by using iTunes. So you will need to sync your phone or your iOS device to your PC using iTunes and what we can do is actually send this file to the file sharing location for this app in iTunes. So if we touch on iTunes we get two options. So we can share this as an iTunes file, so an MP3 or a, a uncompressed Apple lossless or AIF or we can export the entire GarageBand project, which means all of the project files will be stored, and then we can import those again at a later date, and all of our, our song will be intact. The difference there is that if we export it just as a song, it will mix down or render the song, and all we get is a single audio file of the, of the song. We don't actually get any of the tracks or any of the individual elements of the song. So we're going to do both of these today, so I can show you how both of them work. So for this one, um, we're going to choose the iTunes, so this is going to create a copy of this song. And this is another way, so if we were just, if we'd finished with our song and wanted to export it to listen to or to do something with it, then this is the way we can do that. So we can add some info up here. So we've got the artist, composer, and album. And this will be used if we select uh, MP3 or the Apple format. It won't be selected for AIF format because that doesn't include any of the metadata in there. Uh, then we've got the quality options here. So we can choose low quality at 64 kilobit, and that's a fairly low quality file, really only appropriate for spoken word. Wouldn't recommend using that for very many uh, reasons. Medium quality, 128 kilobit, which is probably the old standard for, for MP3. Um, not used too much these days. The high quality, 192, is probably the standard these days. And you've got 256 kilobit, which is the iTunes Plus format, which is the highest quality. Um, 320 kilobit bit is the most common highest quality mp3 format we don't have that supported here on the the iphone though the last two options here are our lossless format so we've got apple lossless and we've got the uncompressed aiff file so lossless simply means that no additional compression will take place which means it results in much larger file sizes but it means that you don't lose any audio quality so if you are exporting this to import into a DAW a digital audio workstation to work on your PC for example you would want that uncompressed file and also if you wanted to uh, burn it to a CD or create uh, something else with it you want to keep the quality as best you can so I'm going to do that for this one leave it as uncompressed AIF and then tap on share at the top here And you'll see it's got sending to iTunes file sharing. So it will copy that over to the part on this phone that is dedicated to file sharing. Um, and when we connect to the PC, we'll show you exactly how that looks. So I'm not quite done here. What I'm going to do is select another um, song and export it as a GarageBand file. So 
Firstly, I'll show you what happens if we select two. So if we've got two different tracks selected here, you'll notice that the options here are grayed out to export because we can only export one track at a time, which is a bit of a pain, um, but it's just the way that, that it's designed. So we'll unselect the beach and we've just got this track called Falling now. And we'll do the same thing. We'll select the uh, Send To or the Export button and scroll down to select iTunes. And this time we're going to select GarageBand as our destination. So if we touch GarageBand, it will send that file. So there's no other options because there's one generic GarageBand file. So that is now being set, that's now sitting in the, uh, in the app's file sharing location. And we'll jump over to the PC now and I'll show you how it looks at that end. Okay, so we're here now in iTunes on the PC and we've plugged in our phone and selected the iPhone at the top here. Um, and the settings down the side here, we've clicked on apps, which has brought us to this screen. So ignore all of my awesome apps on this phone. What we really wanna do is scroll down to the bottom here where we get to the file sharing section. So you may or may not have ever used this. It's a very cool feature and a lot of apps allow you to share files to and from your PC using this uh, feature. So we're gonna click on GarageBand and what you'll notice here is the two files. So the falling, the GarageBand file, and the beach, the AIF file, are both here. So falling, you'll see is 64 meg. So that's got all of the media, all of the different bits and pieces in there of the, the song and the track information. Whereas the beach has simply just the audio file. So it's only 14 meg. And if, that, if we exported that as an MP3, it would probably only be two or three meg in size. Um, so from here to actually save these, and it's kind of hidden down the bottom here, we can't actually drag and drop. It looks like we can drag and drop these to a folder, but Windows and iTunes don't tend to play nicely and let you do that. So what we do need to do is select, well, select both by control clicking. So we've got the two files selected there and we'll simply hit save to. I've already got my location set up here. And so I'll hit select folder. And that will then copy, you can see at the top here, it's copying those two files over to my folder. And if I go there to have a look now at that folder, there they are. So in terms of the, the file, if we wanted to just play this file, so we just double click it and that will open it in either iTunes or, or another option that we have, we can drag. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> we did open it there. We could drag that directly into a DAW um, if we wanted to play that, play around with that or, or use that as part of another song. Um, and the other track here has actually been exported as a GarageBand file. So it's uh, on the PC, it's in a folder like this. And if we open that folder, we've got various subfolders with different elements. So the media, so this is any items that were WAV files, so any of the actual recorded items. If you record your guitar or your microphone or something through there, it'll go as uh, media. And all of the project data here is, in, is stored in this file. So this is all of your MIDI notes and track settings and other elements that are, are part of the, the project. Um, so they're all saved there now. If we go back to iTunes, this is it. We can now safely delete these. So if we didn't want these in there anymore, we can just select them and hit the delete key and it will ask us if we want to delete those and we just hit delete. Um, what, I won't do that for now because what we'll do is we'll jump back um, into the phone and I'll show you if we wanted to import this, uh, app, this uh, falling song back into GarageBand, how we go about doing that. So we're back here in GarageBand on the iPhone and I've safely exported and backed up those files onto my PC. So what I wanna do now is show you, um, as we showed on the PC, if we wanted to now bring this file back in, how we go about doing that. So Falling was the, the track here that we had the backup of, so I'm just gonna select and delete that one and delete song. So that's what I would have done to free up that space on my iPhone and then it's safely backed up on my PC. If I wanna bring it back, I make sure it's in that file sharing section in iTunes. And then I simply go done on that one. And when I add, you'll notice that as well as create a new song and import from iCloud, I've now got this option here, which is to copy from iTunes file sharing. So if I select that, there's my track falling. It's going to import that song back into GarageBand. And there it is back again. So this gives you the power to export all of your tracks. You can free up all of your space on your phone and then bring back the tracks that you want when you need them. So you're not using all of that space 
on your phone all the time. It's also a really cool way to share uh, between devices. So if you have an iPad and an iPhone, you can share the same session between the two devices. You might be out and about and you start a song idea on your phone and you want to transfer it to your iPad. You can do that. It's also great for collaboration. So if you're working with someone else um, and they provide you with a GarageBand file, you can quickly and easily copy that across import it onto your phone, and then start playing around with it, export it back and send it back again. So I hope you found this useful and this helps you with your file management within GarageBand for iPhone and your PC.